Well, obviously, if I have equations, I've got inequalities as well. And the process, our book does a couple different processes in the, um, in the section. I'm going to stick with the method that I think makes a little more sense and is a lot more effective. Um, and that will also be a lot more useful throughout the entire section. Um, this method I can use and extend it out to higher degree polynomials as well. So my process is three steps. We're going to rewrite it as an equation. So we're just going to treat it like an equation first. We're going to solve the equation. And then we're going to make a sign chart. Um, so we use a sign chart. We're going to talk about what that is in a minute. Um, with the zeros, as I'll call them, boundaries. And then last but not least, we want to test values within each boundary. And I'm just abbreviating because it takes me a while to write sometimes. Um, and we're going to use this to determine the solution set or the interval that I need. So I want to solve this inequality. All right. Well, I said that step one was to rewrite it as an equation. So let's do that. And then I'm going to solve the equation. Well, I'm going to do this by factoring. Uh, I'm going to factor by grouping. Uh, product factors of 6 that add up to 5. We're going to try minus 6 and plus 1. Pair off. Factor out. That should get 2x3 plus 1. x minus 3. 2x plus 1. x minus 3. And I get x equals negative 1, oop, half, negative 1 half, and 3 as solutions. I'm going to move this over. Well, so I said I'm going to make a sign chart out of this. And it's really just a number line without scale. I just need room to write. And I just need space to organize, and that's where I get my sign chart from. So it starts off kind of looking like a number line. I want to test an x value, and I want to know the sign, or what we sometimes call, is it parity? No, parity is odd and even. Um, we'll just stick with sign. The sign of the polynomial when I plug in that value. So let's pick something less than 1 half. So maybe we'll test, let's pick a different color. We'll test negative 1. We'll pick something between negative 1 half and 3. So when in doubt, or when you can, always pick 0. Make it easy on yourself. And then I want something bigger than 3. Honestly, I like to pick powers of 10 because the calculations are pretty easy and you can do them quick in your head. Um, but you can pick any number greater than 3. You can pick pi if you're really feeling like it. But I think 10 is easier and you should always take the easy way out with smaller steps like this. So we're going to test all of these. If I plug in negative 1, I'm going to get minus 5 times negative 1 minus 3 equals 0. That's it. And we don't really need an exact number. I just need to know if the sign is going to be positive or negative. Um, I'm going to get 5 plus 5 minus 3, which is 4, which is positive, so positive. At negative 1 half, we know that's going to be equal to 0. And at 3, we know that's going to be equal to 0. When I plug in 0, I'm just going to get negative 3, which is negative. And then when I plug in 10, again, you'll kind of see how quick this calculation is going to go, not just because I was a math major in college. I'm at 200 minus 50 minus 3. It's going to give me 147, yep, which is positive, positive. So the question is, what do I do with this? Well, I'm looking for all the x's that make my function greater than 0, which means positive. So let's, or 0. So I get positive when I'm less than negative 1 half or equal to negative 1 half will give me my 0. And then I'll get positive or 0 when I'm at 3, including 3, and greater than 3. 
So I want, as an interval, from negative infinity all the way up to negative one half and including negative one half. And I also want to take three, including three, all the way up to infinity. And there is my interval. Here is my final answer. And that is how you solve a quadratic inequality.